introduce him. As if you already don't know. Straight from the subways of New York City. To the Corbin show. To America's Got Talent. Episode number 52. My name is Jacqueline. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as at Jacqueline Salem. This is a podcast that is about knitting and sewing mostly, but sometimes like whatever crafty things I get up to in my day-to-day -day life. If you couldn't tell by the name, I live in Brooklyn with my two cats. And thank you so much for joining me today. I have a lot of stuff to share. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you'll not be aware how much I've been making lately, especially in the way of sewing. I don't know where this came from. I guess finally all of the quilting madness from Christmas is behind me and I felt like ready to make something. 
And then for whatever reason, the sewing thing has just really been clicking for me lately. I don't know, but if you're not following me on Instagram, you really should go over there if you're interested in craft stuff and New York stuff, because that's what I post about. But especially because lately I've been doing what I call sewing Sundays, although I don't know why I call it Sundays, just because I do it really any day of the week that I feel like doing it, but I use Instagram stories a lot to detail the process from start to finish of how I'm making a certain project so you can kind of watch at your own leisure. And so many of you are loving that. So I've been, you know, trying to post those as I make stuff and it's just so much less pressure than like making tutorials or things like that. But anyway, so I'll get to all the sewing stuff in a bit, but just know there's a lot sitting next to me right now that I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed because it's been such a long time since I have recorded. Definitely over a month now. Sorry about that. Summer just gets crazy as you all know. So without further ado, let's jump into the content. I'm going to start with knitting. There's not a whole lot of knitting to show you, but still exciting stuff, I think. So let's hop to it. First thing, <coughs> excuse me, is... Oh, I just realized I forgot one of them. Hold on, I have to get that. Okay, so I'll start with something you've seen before. Um, these are, or this is a finished Clark sock. This is my own pattern, the Clark socks. This has been very popular lately, which I'm so grateful to anybody who chooses to knit any of my patterns. I'm just like so flattered and excited and whenever you guys tag me in your projects and picking out your yarn selections, I just think it's really fun. But I had to knit myself a pair of Clark socks because I gave my sample for the pattern pictures to my mom. And so I really wanted to knit my own, so I finished one of these. I'm pretty sure I showed this on a previous episode, but just in case. Well, I know, I know I've shown this on previous episodes, but just an update, I guess. So this is again the Clark Socks and the yarn is Knox Yarn Co. in the Memento Mori colorway. And it has, of course, the little back cable detail. So I finished one. And then I'm pretty sure, oh my gosh, have I not even cast on the second one? Oh my God, I've been so bad. I haven't cast on the second one yet, but here's the yarn. Is what it is they will get done this is a very snug fitting sock for some reason I think because I knit them on zeros where I knit my sample on ones it's a little bit tighter this is BFL yarn and the sample was knit in merino so I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it they still fit but they are snug so I guess with the more I wear them though it should be fine so Clark socks. Still working on that. Have one left to go. Thank you so much for everybody who participated in the Cal. I had such a great time like watching all of your posts, obviously, as I just mentioned. And yeah, I just love seeing all the stuff you're making. I still have to finish another one, obviously, so I didn't finish in time for the Cal. But I am drawing prizes for that. I haven't done that yet, but I'm going to do that through Instagram. So I'll look at all the Instagram posts and just like kind of randomly pick a few that I like. So thank you so much for participating in the cow. And then a quick update on socks for mom. I had her try on this sock. It's socks on a plane and the yarn is hedgehog fibers in the hurricane colorway, which I've been told several times by lots of people that it bleeds. Oh no, I just pulled out my, well, I guess I'll have to pick those up to do the kitchener stitch. It's fine. Not worried. I just didn't kitchener the toe yet and I just ripped out the DPN on accident, but whatever. So, have to finish this first one and I have cast on the second one. I was kind of, I wanted to, fin these were supposed to be a Mother's Day present for my mom, but I wanted to make sure that it fit her, so I had her try this one on. It fits and so now I can move on to the second one. And there's the yarn for that. I love, this is definitely not my normal color. I'm not really a big into, I like wearing navy blue, but I don't, other than that, I'm not a big blues person. I don't really like have a lot of blue yarn. And this adorable project bag, which I love. Okay, so that's projects you've seen. Here are some new ones. The next one is a design, and it's almost done, and I seriously... I cast on the sock for the first time, I think in like late March or April, and I must have like 
cast it on, ripped it out, reworked it at least seven times that I can think of. The design has been sketched out since last year. I just like haven't had a lot of time to work on it or really the drive. Knitting has not been my main focus lately for some reason. Crafting in general, the sewing yes, but I don't know, recently knitting is just maybe because it's summer. I don't know. I can always find a reason to knit socks though. So I'm happy to say that finally this design is working out and I'm so excited about it because I've talked about it before but it's inspired by the New York Public Library and here's a little peek at it. I love it so much. It's like climbing cables pattern. Of course I always have to do some sort of little back detail. So I love that. So the ribbing kind of gives it some stretch to it. It fits really well, really well. So in love with this. So I haven't come up with a name for it yet. I'm sure I will. Something, you know, library inspired. But yes, I love it. And this gorgeous yarn is Sweet Sparrow Yarns in the Blackberry Moose colorway. Isn't it so pretty? Ugh. I love this and it looks like even better on you know what let me grab a sock blocker here it is on sock blockers oh could you just die I love it I'm so obsessed with this of course I love all of the designs otherwise I wouldn't design them but I just put so much effort into the designs that I do and I always just want to make sure that it's as pleasant an experience for the knitter as much as it is, like, as much as pretty as it looks. So I obviously it has to, like, look nice, but I want it to be fun to knit, and this center stitch is really fun. I'd call it in more of an advanced beginner, or begin, like, advanced beginner pattern. I wouldn't say this is, like, the best pattern for a first sock knitter. Clark socks, excellent for beginners, but this one's, like, a little bit, um, even the Irving socks, super, super simple, but... This pattern is a little bit trickier. Not tricky, it's just, I don't know, whatever. I love it. Oh, I'm so excited. I cannot wait for the release of these. So I have the second one almost finished. Just, we'll probably finish it this week on the subway. Just have the foot, rest of the foot to go and the toe. I've already knit about three inches on the foot. And then I will have Julie, my lovely friend, the dyer behind the yarn I used for the sample, she's going to be taking pictures. I love the pictures she takes of my pattern. She's done all the photos for my patterns and they just turn out exactly how I envision. She just totally gets what I'm going for. So these are the library socks. They won't be called the library socks. I haven't decided on the name yet, but I love them. Okay, and the last thing I want to show you that's been cast on, there's a plan at least for something else, but is a new sweater. So I have the Akiko cardigan. I have cast on the Akiko cardigan in the Primrose Yarn Co's Maple Leaf colorway. It's a gorgeous cardigan, but it's so cumbersome to take with me on the subway and around. It's just kind of too big. And so I wanted a sweater that I could take with me on the go more often. And so I cast on a stockinette raglan cardigan and this is kind of what I've got so far. I'm knitting it in Brooklyn Tweed Loft which is their fingering weight and this is the wood smoke colorway. Pick these up at Brooklyn General and kind of just going rogue on it. I used a pattern by Hohi Locatelli as like my guide for how many stitches to cast on but other than that there's nothing that's similar to her pattern and yeah just like increasing to get to the sleeves look how gorgeous this looks it's so lightweight but it feels really warm I love Brooklyn Tweed yarn love it Look at this, it's so pretty. So, stock, stockinette cardigan. The idea is when I get to the sleeves and split for the sleeves, that I'm then going to start incorporating the Long John's colorway, which is this amazing red. 
and I'm going to do stripes. So once I split for the sleeves, I'm going to start striping it with this, so these two together. And it's going to be kind of a cropped cardigan, that's kind of how I like my sweaters. But I think these are perfect together. I love long johns. I've been dying for a project to do in this colorway. And I think this kind of like gray brown is the perfect backdrop. Hi kitty. <laughs> perfect backdrop for it. Ugh, I die. I just love Brooklyn Tweed. Love it. I decided to hand wind the balls just because I was in that mood. Aren't they so pretty? Love this. So I'm almost at the end of my first 50 gram, well, almost maybe halfway through the first 50 gram skein. And it's looking great so far, I think. I just, I know it's just stockinette, but I'm just so excited about it. And I'll wear the hell out of this for sure with the colors. Definitely my style. Anything striped, I probably own it. My closet is like half stripes. So that is the raglan cardigan that will be striped that I'm casting on. I'm debating on whether or not I should take like a lot of notes while I'm doing this and then writing up a pattern as I go. It was actually really difficult for me to find just a basic raglan cardigan pattern on Ravelry. I'm sure things like Ann Bud's Book of Sweaters would have that sort of thing, but I don't own that book and I really just wanted to cast it on. So um, yeah, I'm debating about whether or not I should write a pattern. The button band is not a pickup and then knit later on. It's a knit as you go. So the stripes will be kind of weird. I don't want to stripe the button band also, so I'll just carry both of the yarns as I'm striping and only use the wood smoke colorway to do the button band. But I'm just wondering, maybe I should like take a lot of notes and write a pattern for it. We'll see. And then the last thing I want to talk about um, in relation to knitting is another sweater I have planned to cast on because it's, this yarn has been in my stash for quite a while. I had two skeins and unfortunately it's not a dyer that dyes anymore so I hesitate to like promote it too much. I mean I'm sure you could probably find it on D stashes on Ravelry but um, it's Cat's Kettle. I won't pull all of them out but this is the colorway. It's the Eggs 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 colorway. And I fell in love with it because it has, it's odd because it has blue in it, which is not my typical thing, and also yellow, which is also not a color I gravitate toward. But for some reason, I saw a knitted swatch of this. She did a collaboration with the Grocery Girls, and I, it just reads as a neutral from far away when it's knit up. So I loved the colorway for that reason. It's just very, it goes with a lot, actually, once it's knit up. So... I had two skeins of this already in my stash. I scoured Ravelry for two more, so I bought I have two more over here. And what I want to do is knit um, Mina Phillip, the Knitting Expats, Mix and Match cardigan. And I want to do a crop version of the Mix and Match cardigan. I just think it will be absolutely perfect for this yarn. I designed her logo, by the way, in case you're new to this podcast. I think I talked about it in like very early days episodes, but... Yep, I designed her logo. Um, yeah, so that's eggs, eggs, eggs for the mix and match cardigan. I'm really excited to cast this on. This yarn is so soft. I do think it's just such a shame that she doesn't die anymore. And I don't know anything about it, so don't ask. <laughs> there we go. So that will be cast on soon enough. Stoke cold brew, you guys. Oh my gosh, by the way, they started selling it in my grocery store. Finally, like literally two blocks away. So now I can get this cold brew whenever I want and not have to go to like the Barclay Center to get it. No joke, I really was going to the Barclay Center to get this coffee, which is a good ways away from me. It's not like in my neighborhood or anything. If you're new, Stoke Cold Brew is my obsession. You can buy it in most grocery stores, like not in New York, but it's really, really good. So smooth, the taste is amazing, not bitter. It's just like really, really good. They should sponsor me. Stoke, if you wanna sponsor me. Okay, let's move along to sewing. Cause as you know, if you follow me on Instagram, there is a lot of it. Where do I even 
begin. I don't know. All right, let's start with finished projects that I've obviously finished. Da -da -da. All right, so first one, let me get the pattern for you. This is Vogue V9251, and I made View B, the maxi length version, and I used the fluted sleeve for it. I cannot say enough good things about this dress. I am absolutely obsessed with it and will definitely make like at least five more of these. I bought fabric for more of them. I haven't made another one yet, but it is definitely in my queue to make again because it just looks so good on. It is just perfect for my body type. I have airing on like a pear shape body type. So my hips and my waist are like two different sizes for sure in any of these patterns, but even like ready to wear um, and different from my bust as well. So wrap dresses are just like really, really great for pear shape body types. And it's this linen cotton blend fabric. It was a mystery. It didn't really say at the store. Um, and it's this navy blue that kind of airs on purple. It's looking really blue on camera right now, but it, it does like sort of air into the purple territory, but it's definitely blue. Well, most definitely blue, but it's like a cooler blue. Wrap dress. I cut the size 12, sewed the size 12 straight out of the packet, and it fits like a dream. The only thing I will say is that I can't because I'm not so discerning yet as a sewist about like things to fix, I can't say if it's only with lots of use that I've noticed it or because maybe as it's the bodice is cut on the bias that it started to settle and shift a little bit. But it does, it is very, very open and I do need to get some sort of snap to be able to snap it closed because currently whenever I wear it, I have to either wear a cami, which I haven't really been doing with it, or use a safety pin to pin it in the center. But my God, this dress is like bombshell status. It looks so good on my body. I just like need to make so many more of these. And the flutter sleeve I think is so adorable. I will say, and Grace, who is Wizard Dreams, I talk about her all the time, she did talk about in her own make of this, she did a flutter sleeve as well. For whatever reason, the flutter sleeve pattern piece is like almost a circle. It's ovalish, but it's shorter on the sleeve cap. So it's longer in the front and back and then gets shorter up at the top. I'm not sure why they did that. Maybe it's a design feature and I don't really like it. You think, I think it only works for this dress because this fabric is not super, super drapey. It's like got some structure to it. So it looks okay on here because it flutters out and doesn't like lay flat like a rayon chalet would, for example, or something much more like drapey than this fabric. But I think if it was in a fabric that was any drapier or not as structured, it would look strange that this sleeve, flutter sleeve cap is like shorter at the top of the cap than it is in the front and the back. So if I make this again, depending on the fabric that I use, I will definitely redraft the sleeve pattern or just fill it in. So use that pattern piece, put another piece of paper, tape another piece of paper underneath it, and then kind of draw it out into the full circle at this top of this arm, top of the shoulder here, because it looks it's strange. It doesn't look weird, like I said, with this dress, but I think it would look weird in a drapier fabric. So all of the insides are finished nicely, pressed and surged. And you do see the inside of the dress at the bottom as you're walking. So you do kind of have to make sure, because it's a high-low hem, you do have to make sure that the insides are finished nicely because you'll see them um, when you're walking. So I love how this turned out. I love, love, love it. I did do some like shortcuts. Like I did not, I did not use bias tape to bind the neckline. I surged the edge, turned it under, called it a day. It works for me. I'm fine with that. I did that for all of the hems. And this is a very long curved hem and it turns out really well. Whenever I do that, it keeps like surge it first and then just turn it under rather than turning it twice. 
it makes it like stay really flat so I like this method for now but yes I will definitely definitely be making this dress again I'm trying to think of anything else to say about it the fabric was really great to work with because it's the same on the front and the back so there is no confusion about what pattern piece was which and it just came together really well I love the ties I made the ties yeah I just I really really love it I cut the size 12 I believe which has been kind of the case for most of the um, very easy Vogue patterns that I've been cutting like I said in the 12 fit straight out of the packet for me although I maybe could like do some modifying for the bodice just so it's not gaping so much in the front but I don't think it would be worthy of cutting a smaller size because it fits in the waist portion so I'd have to work on that but I'm so proud of this dress it's like one of the first real dress wins that I've had and maybe ever because I've only started sewing garments I don't know like two years ago now so I've been sewing since single digits age but quilts though so nothing for a body so this has been one of my first successful dresses and I loved it the pattern does not give instructions for finishing the insides of the dress so you kind of have to unless you don't care about that and don't mind the raw edges but I think that would fray in the wash so you kind of have to finish the seams on the inside uh, however you see fit so I just surged most of the pattern pieces so again that is Vogue V9251 labeled as a very easy pattern and I would say that that's on the mark with the exception that it doesn't like I said have finishing instructions on the inside which I think is like a real shame I don't know why they just don't include that but it's a great pattern loved it would recommend it will make again lots of them all right the next thing I want to show you is my finished rosy dress so the rosy dress is a pattern by sew over it there are a few options on here. Sweetheart neckline. This kind of, I don't really know what we're calling this here, but this is the one I made actually, is this one right here. And then a skirt option. So, so cute. I bought this striped fabric specifically for this dress because I wanted to make a bodice that had stripes going in opposite directions. So I wanted a horizontal in the center, vertical on the sides, and then it mirrors that in the back. And I cannot tell you how flattering that looks on. It kind of gives an illusion of a smaller waist because of the vertical stripes on your sides. Um, I did do quite a bit of modifying to this. What size did I cut out? Let's see if I can find out. I feel like I cut the 12 for this one too. That seems to be a pretty consistent thing is cutting 12s for a lot of patterns and it calls for it has this pleat that's how the pattern is written is with this pleat in the center front right here and then it's a gathered waist for the rest of it in the pattern this one is not because if you've watched previous episodes you will know that this fabric is kind of heavier and the gathered fabric for the waist was not flattering at all. It was adding so much bulk at my waist and making me look a lot heavier than I was. It just was not a cute look. But I didn't really know how to fix it, so I set it aside and thought I'll come back to it at a later date. So in the meantime, that was a year ago actually, when I set it aside because it wasn't didn't look good on me. In that time, I learned that a lot of gathered pattern pieces are either a one and a half times or two times the width of what it will be for the final piece. So say for example you have like this one's you know fitted right here. The gathered version of this pattern piece was two times the amount of this right here. So it's a very consistent like measurable thing and I learned that from Grace Wizard Dreams, thank you, because she was helping me evaluate a top that I have in my ready to wear wardrobe and love but don't have a pattern for and would love to figure out a way to make it so she was teaching me that about this gathered top that I have so I went back to measure this pattern piece after I learned that and sure enough the waist piece was two times the amount of the final fitted measurement 
I'm going to try and be as articulate as possible explaining this. It's just like a little bit muddled in my mouth to explain. But basically, I chopped the pattern pieces for the skirt by half, and then that would make it fit the bodice top. It was a little bit challenging because in addition to cutting the pieces to fit the skirt, or to fit, sorry, to fit the bodice, I also had to pattern match the stripes, and it's not perfect. It's pretty close. It's hard to tell. Like, when it's on, it looks fine. Um, it's kind of off mostly, like, right here. But when it's on, it's fine. It looks okay. But it had to, like, be pretty close, otherwise it was going to look strange. So I'm really proud of how this turned out. I love a good feature zip. And the interior are scraps of Rifle Paper Company fabric. When I taught two of my friends to make Ogden camis, they both did the Rifle Paper Company. And I thought that I would try to get a bodice out of, bodice lining out of the remnants of that Ogden cami. And I did, and I'm so excited. The bodice is boned. It uses plastic boning. I haven't sewn it down to this yet because I kind of wanted to show you. But um, yeah, I use this plastic boning, and I've used little tabs that I made to make sure it doesn't kind of poke through. I cut whatever we're calling these pieces right here on the bias so that they kind of slant away. I couldn't decide if I wanted to do vertical or uh, horizontal, but Julie helped me decide that one should be bias, and it's perfect. It looks so cute on. And then the straps, of course, it did horizontal stripes. It just looks so good on. I feel really good in this dress. I wouldn't say I'm in a huge rush to make another one. I don't know if it's because I lost weight in between the time I was making this dress at the beginning versus now, or if it's because some of the pieces were cut, you know, like this is cut on the grain. These are not cut on the grain. So I don't know if it's because I cut these pieces perpendicular to the grain line on the fabric that it like shifted or made it bigger or stretched. I don't I don't really know exactly what happened, but I did have to take in like three inches or something like that to make it fit, the bodice fit. So that's a thing. But other than that, it looks so cute on. I'm definitely gonna hopefully have popped in several pictures by now to show you and I'm just really proud of this dress and I think it's like made and finished to a really high standard. It was something that didn't work for me at first. I set it aside, came back to it a year later and knew what to do to finish it and I'm really glad that I stuck with it because it's one of my favorite new dresses in my wardrobe for sure. All right, the next one I'll show you is the Grace corset top. There is a blue theme happening here. Like I said, I don't like blue yarn, which is true, but I do wear like a lot of navy blue. It's a safe color. This is the Grace corset top by Named Clothing. Named Clothing is an independent pattern designer based out of somewhere in Scandinavia. I want to say Finland, but I'm not sure about that. Their patterns are in English, though, or they come in English. I'm not sure if they originate in other languages. So if you speak Finnish or whatever um, language, I don't know if they come in that, those languages or not, but they definitely come in English. So this is the Grace Corset Top by Named Clothing. It is a top that I made out of this gingham fabric that I got at a Hobby Lobby while I was visiting my family in Tennessee. And I think it turned out so cute. I unfortunately have no pictures of me wearing this make, um, except for you can watch it in my stories highlight on Instagram if you're curious, but I think this turned out so adorable. And I did learn some new skills while I was making it. Flat fell seams, for one, the first time I've ever made those, which I think is cool because it gives it like a sporty look to it. <coughs> Excuse me. I love the tie straps, they're super cute. Had these buttons, it's a whole button down shirt. Sorry, it's a little bit wrinkly on camera, but yeah, it's adorable. I'm basically ready for any picnics that anyone wants to invite me to in the city. My one complaint with it 
as you might be able to tell from this, but it is a little bit short. Like I, next time I cut it, I'll definitely try to lengthen it a little bit, probably by three inches. It's not like not wearable, but I definitely have to wear it with high-waisted jeans or with a skirt that comes more high-waisted. It's definitely like a high-waisted look. And I cannot wait to wear, or to make, uh, sorry, the lander pants by True Bias because I think it will look so cute if I do a high-waisted lander pant with this. It's going to be adorable. Totally 70s. But yes, love this. Very flattering. Comes in at the waist because the flat felt seams, the way it's constructed, kind of has the seams that come down into the waistline or curved down toward the waist, so it looks really good on. Very body flattering. Like I said, don't have any pictures of myself in this one to show, at least I don't think, but trust me, it's adorable. Definitely worth an afternoon. I have nice finishings on the inside. Again, this was a turn, a hem and turn job because it was already really short, so there was no way I was going to do a second flip up for this one. And yeah, buttons. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to say about this one. I love it. I think it turned out really great. There's the back. Grace Corset Top by Named Clothing. Woo! This is the FO show. Okay, we're nearing the end. One more FO and then a work in progress. Last FO is the Netty Bodysuit by Closet Case Patterns. I made the low back scoop neck version and I believe I cut the size 12 for this one as well it's in my notes on Instagram for sure if you will just go look at it um, and the long sleeve version again the netty bodysuit by closet case patterns this looks so good on hot damn like the pictures that Grace took of me on uh, her rooftop are stellar it's finished um, on the inside with the serger has this cute little neon yellow ribbon detail on the inside because that's to keep the, uh, I believe to keep it from stretching it like a really stressed part of the garment. It's in the pattern, it tells you to do that. And yeah, it just looks really cute on. The only thing I will say, it fits really well, but it's definitely got a bit of like the visible panty line thing happening. It's a very conservative cut. It's like a very, conservative is the wrong word. It's like a very full coverage. It's hard to see because it's black, sorry. But it's a very full coverage over the butt type of look. And so it like doesn't work with a lot. It's not going to work with a lot of my clothing because you just get visible panty line that way. And I just, I don't like that. So the next time I cut it, I will definitely do a higher leg version and potentially more of like a thong or a tonga type of style, Brazilian on the back of it. I just think that will work better with my clothes. But other than that, it's awesome. Love this thing. Have nothing but good things to say about this pattern. If you're considering making a bodysuit, it was really, really simple. Would highly recommend this pattern if you need a bodysuit pattern. And I just think it looks so good. It's so hard to show because it's so dark, but Love it. I made it because my American apparel, I had one from American Apparel that I somehow lost and I wore it all the time. And I was like, you know what, I'll just try to make one. And Grace gave me this fabric that she got from work and it was perfect for it. I do have a little bit left over, but I don't know if it's enough to make another one. Definitely not enough to make a long sleeve one. I might have enough to left to make a short sleeve one, but we'll see. But yes, this is a great pattern. I did have to cut, and it looked suspicious even as I was making it, I did have to cut, I think, three inches total out of the crotch because it was just so long. And the pattern, when you look at the pieces, the pattern pieces get drastically longer in the crotch, which I think is sort of a strange drafting because just because you're you might be a bigger size doesn't mean you're also taller so it was a really 
at least taller to that degree. So I did have to cut three inches out of the crotch and I could probably have cut more, like probably at least one to two inches more out of it. So I did have to make that modification. But other than that, straight, similar thing, straight out of the packet as is. Okay, and the last sewing project I'm going to talk to you about is M6, what is this? M6955, and I'm making view C slash B. The only difference between these two is that view B has a racer back. So I used the racer back as a way to kind of, I'm actually really not doing much in the way of making this pattern. I'm just kind of using it as a basis to make um, something as close to an inspiration dress as I saw. So there's this dress from, I think, Ge like General Store, I forget, somewhere in California where this shop called General Store is. And it had this kind of crisscross back top dress in the back, and it's a pinafore style dress. So, so cute, and I just loved that dress. So I kind of wanted to make something inspired by that, but not a pinafore because then I'd have to like wear something underneath it. It was really low back. So I didn't want it to be that low, uh, but I did like the crisscross back. So I'm using this kind of as a way to hack that dress. So what I've done so far is I have squared the neckline rather than this curved neckline. I've squared the neckline and then I've used the racer back as a guide, the bottom, kind of the base of where that starts racer backing for the back. I've used the bottom of it as a guide to just cut the pattern piece straight across. And so that way it will leave the kind of the top part open to do the crisscross straps. This is the work in progress. This is the skirt portion. This fabric is so nice. It's a twill, but it's a really drapey twill in this amazing blue green color. I am obsessed, completely obsessed with this color. Love this. So this is the skirt portion of it. It's a full circle skirt. I'm suspicious of how short the skirt looks compared to how it looks on this woman here. And then this is the bodice so far. We'll see. But yeah, I'm liking the process of like hacking this to kind of make it my own with this dress I want to make. I have a feeling I'll probably square the neckline even a little bit shorter. It's a little bit higher than I want it right now. And I have cut, I don't think I have it out here, but I have cut um, the bodice pieces a second time to do a lined bodice. So I'm going to line the bodice and probably put I don't know, I have to see when I try it on for a fitting if I can use one of my kind of special bras for low back stuff, if it will be enough for this dress or if the back is too open and I'll need to potentially sew bra cups into the bodice. Uh, we'll see. But that's what I'm thinking right now and I just am loving how this has turned out. Again, all this is detailed on my stories highlights on Instagram. This is so soft. This fabric is like literally a dream. It's so drapey. It's on the heavier side, but it's so drapey. And I have enough left over to definitely make shorts or a skirt, so I will be doing that with my leftover fabric. I cut my bodice lining out of this fabric right here. It's just like a soft, very lightweight cotton. The uh, dress is fitted with a um, fitted skirt and has darts at both the front and on the back. So that's kind of my favorite style for clothing. I'm in making a few dresses now. I've just kind of come to realize like ways that I like things to fit and ways that I don't. So for example, princess seam dresses. Just not my style, and I've just kind of learned that as time has gone on and I've sewn them that like I can't figure out why I don't like this, and it's just because princess seams are just not my thing. I really prefer uh, patterns that are fitted with darts and are fitted, oh, that's not a fitted skirt, or fitted skirts. Gathered skirts very rarely are like something that look good on my body. I just don't prefer them, but... But yeah, I'm loving the process of making this dress and hacking the pattern to kind of make something that suits me. It's kind of like a puzzle to work out. It's kind of, you know, it's fun. Like the crisscross straps, I'm going to somehow have to figure out how to encase the straps between 
the lining and the main bodice so I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna go about that yet but it's fun to use my skills like I'm thinking towards you know the Ogden cami that I've already made and how that strap is sandwiched between a facing and the main part of the shirt so using skills from other patterns that I've made to hack the things I would like really like to have in my wardrobe it's all very rewarding and exciting and for whatever reason lately it's just sort of been clicking for me I think one major thing that's gonna have to change about how I was sewing clothes before is online fabric ordering unless I know for sure what like I know what a rayon chalet is for example so I can probably order that with confidence online but unless I'm like sure in that way about what the fabric type is I think online ordering is just gonna have to stop I've kind of got too much fabric that's not really usable for projects that I purchase it for immediately and it just I don't know it's just hard to fabric choice is so important with the clothes that we're making so online fabric ordering probably gonna stop doing that Whew, okay that was so much I keep looking over here because I have a whole pile of fabric of stuff that I can show you for future projects and patterns that I've bought, but I think I'm gonna leave it there for now just because I've shown you so much and I just like don't want to overwhelm any more than you might already be. And I'm getting a little bit of talking fatigue because there's just so much I'm trying to remember at the same time. So I think I'm gonna leave it here for now. I'm going to probably go and work on my crisscross back dress for the rest of the day. And yeah, I hope you guys have a really great couple of weeks until I speak to you next. In the meantime, happy crafting, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye! He's like, that's my lucky charm. You understand? I mean, on the real. <laughs> one day we had 20 million, next day we had 40 million views. So this is one of the songs we did. Just me and you. Yeah.